Hey, Aaron Rabinowitz here for RedGiantTV.com. In this episode of Red Giant TV, we're going to look at a simple tip for working with your numerical text and then maybe tighten it up a bit with an expression or two. I'll be using no third-party plugins in this tutorial. That's right, nothing from Red Giant or anyone else, just the tools that come with After Effects. So if all you own is After Effects, then you're good to go, although you may want to buy a computer and a chair. Now, a few months ago, I discovered a great site called grayscalegorilla.com. The gray spelled with an E, not an A. That's the website of photographer and motion designer Nick Campbell. Every few weeks, Nick runs a five-second animation contest where people submit five seconds of animation on a subject or common phrase that he throws out there. Kick the bucket, for example. But he recently had a great one called Old Video Games, and I was totally stoked. Because when I was a kid, I spent quarter after quarter on games like Star Wars, the arcade game, and Dragon's Lair. Yeah, that was back when people actually left their house to throw time and money away. Thanks to game consoles and the interweb, you can do it without ever leaving your home. Yep, technology changes everything, doesn't it? Anyway, watching some of those great animations got me thinking about video game scores. You see, when animating that sort of thing, it can be kind of a pain in the butt because while scores take up only a small space on the screen, maybe up in the corner, they actually require a lot of work to animate. If every single time you blow up a bad guy or jump over a mushroom or eat a ghost, or maybe eat a mushroom and see a ghost, yeah, you have to type in a new score. And that can take a lot of time and painstaking work for very little return on investment. For example, right now my score text is set to 1500. But if I want to change it, I have to animate it manually. In fact, I have to go in and type in a new score. So I'll click on the source text keyframe stopwatch, which creates a keyframe, a hold keyframe by the way, and I'll move down in time a bit, and then I'll type in 1650. This sets another hold keyframe. Then I can move down further and set it to 1700. Right, so you get the point. I have to manually go in there and enter a value each time. Imagine having to do this over and over again. Kinda sucks. And because source text can only use hold keyframes, that means values jump from keyframe to keyframe. So if you wanted your score to rise or fall over time, gradually changing in value number by number, you can't do that. All in all, not a great system. So let me show you a quick way to animate the score. And you can adapt this to any number of things, a digital odometer, temperature readings, whatever. I've got a null in here, and with my null layer selected, I'll choose Effect, Expression Controls, Slider Control. I cover the expression controls in a three-part tutorial on my website, allbetsareoff.com. Next, with the null still selected, I'll hit E to reveal the slider effect, and I'll twirl it down to reveal the slider value. Then I'll alt-click on the layer's source text keyframe stopwatch, and using the expression pick whip, I'll drag it to the slider value. As you can see, this has created an expression that simply says, take the value from the slider and use it as the value for the source text. So as you can see, if I go into the effects panel and drag the slider, the numbers change to match the null's slider effect value. But clearly this doesn't look too good. We're getting decimal places. Now, call me old school, but I'm a fan of integers, that is, whole numbers. Hey, this is video games, yo, not the library Dewey Decimal System. Oh, snap! And yeah, you can ensure an integer by scrubbing the value instead of the slider. That'll give you only integers, but I like the wholly imaginary tactile sensation of sliding a slider. So I'm going to do something different. I'm going to jump into my expression for the source text, and I'll make the following changes. At the beginning, I'll type S equals. So now it reads as follows. The letter S is equal to whatever the value is in our slider controls slider property. And then at the end, I'll put in a semicolon. The semicolon is used to end the defining of a new term, which is all we've done here. Right now, the expression does nothing. It's only an explanation of the term S, which we're using as a shorthand to represent the much longer property name for the slider effect slider value. It's just much easier to work with shorter terms. On the next line, I'll type math period round open parentheses S close parentheses, which basically means take the value of s, in other words, the value of our slider control, and then round it to the nearest whole number. Slide that slider now, and problem solved. 
all whole numbery goodness. Nice, right? I got that expression from my good friend Dan Eberts, whom you may know from Creative Cow and Motionscript.com. He and I are actually working on a few really cool things right now, but uh, that's all I'm going to say. And if you want to have the numbers jump in increments of, say, 10, you could simply get into the expression and add an asterisk 10 next to the equation, meaning multiply the current value by 10. Now for every one whole number the slider value goes up, the text value jumps 10. So 1 is equal to 10, 10 is equal to 100, and so on. And of course you could set that multiplication factor by 100 or 1000 or even something seemingly random like 42. Now another problem you'll encounter is the range of the values. If you slide that slider, you're limited to whatever is at the end here. You could use the scrubber to go beyond it. But you can also right click on the slider value and from the pop-up choose edit. In there you can set the minimum and maximum values. So I'll set this to 10,000 as a maximum. If you wanted you could use negative numbers for the minimum and the maximum technically. It's up to you. Anyway, once that's done you have a much larger range of values at your fingertips. Now of course all of this is keyframeable. Just set a keyframe for the slider and then move down in time and raise the value of the slider. And because we're using linear keyframes, the text or numbers will change gradually over time, not just jump to the next value. But if that's not something you want, you can select your keyframes and right click on them and choose toggle hold keyframe. This makes them hold keyframes, which means they jump from value to value instead of interpolating between values. Okay, so far so good, but what if you're one of those weird, crunchy, holistic animator types who wants to do it all with one keystroke? Or maybe you're just really lazy and don't want a keyframe at all? Well, courtesy of Dan Eberts, I have an answer to that as well. Of course, I don't really understand the answer because it's outside the range of my coding knowledge, but hey, that's not a reason not to share. So if you add the expression you're seeing on your screen to the slider effects slider property, you can then add layer markers to the layer by hitting the asterisk key on the number pad and it will add one to the slider's current value. Now don't get up close to your screen and squint here, it's not good for your eyes. I'll be including the expression in the accompanying After Effects project file. You can also go back into the expression and add an asterisk 10 next to the equation and that means that the value will then be multiplied by 10 making it add 10 at each marker instead of 1. And the great thing is, even with this expression, you can still animate the slider property and have the markers just add to whatever values you're adding manually. So for example, maybe you're blowing up little asteroids and getting 10 points a pop, and then you blow up a big one. You'll probably want to get more points for that one target. So assuming you're already using hold keyframes, you can just jump in there and jack up the score a bunch, and then continue using the markers for the smaller targets as you were doing before. Well, there you go. Pretty cool. I can imagine a lot of cool stuff that can be done with this expression, and I'll probably use it in another tutorial at some point later. But there is one important thing that I should point out. I'm using a font called OCRA Standard, which is a monospaced font. That is a font whose characters all take up the exact same amount of space. That's not to say that each character is the same size. A comma is not going to be the same size as zero, but unlike a non-monospaced font, the empty area surrounding the character is designed to be a part of it, making each letter or symbol take up as much space as any other. You know, if you really want to learn about monospaced fonts and their history, check out Wikipedia, the best source for non-biased, well-researched, and wholly factual information. Yes, sirree Bob. Anyway, like I said at the beginning, no third-party plugins were used in this tutorial. Just something I wanted to do, and which I hope to do a lot more of. Hey. Free info about the tools that you already have. Blog about it, and if you feel like hitting Twitter, we won't complain about your tweeting habit. In fact, I don't mean to be rude, but I'm actually Twittering right now. Just finished another tutorial going out for an ice cream shake with my main squeeze. Okay, once again, I'm Aaron Rabinowitz for RedGiantTV.com. See you next time.